Hour two overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Confirm with an eye later in the hour. Mike Johnson coming up here in a few moments. Ilya Samson, I'll get the start tomorrow night. He had a bunch of coaches who weren't happy last night. Bruce Cassidy, head coach of the Vegas Golden Knights, called his team's play beer league <laughs> play last night, which I appreciate. And they're like. It's like the ups and the downs are so much greater. It's like Vegas started out, weren't they a 10 and 1 Stanley Cup champions to start the year? And it's like you know it's coming and then it's like coaches just can't stop themselves. Yeah, and how do you get back out of it, right? Like generally over the course of a long season, which hockey is a very long season, you're going to have a rut. Like last year Boston was the rare exception. We you never see that. You see it every like 40 years where Vegas, like you said, has hit a rut. L.A., remember L.A. was breaking records for winning games on the road. Yes, yes. To start the year, they did not lose on the road. Yeah. And now they're a disaster. Like, they can't win. They're losing, it feels like, every single night. And there's a lot of pressure on them. Edmonton, conversely, they hit their wall to start the year. Yeah. Now they can't lose. So, you know, but I... Now we're at the point in the season, Hayes, where you're, whatever streak you want to go on, it, it's got real consequences. Like, yes, you want to get into after the All Star break and go in the tank for two or three weeks? That could literally mean your season, like especially if you're a middle of the ground team. Yes, right. Like if Boston hits the skid for a bit, okay. If Winnipeg, Vancouver, Vancouver, I do circle as different than like Boston has been doing it for for decades. It feels like they just they know what they're doing, but they've won five or six in a row now. Mm -hmm. Even if they lost three or four in a row, had a couple injuries, I would not lose sleep. I would just assume Boston will figure it out. Vancouver has not really hit a rut at any point. And, re and recently, they're playing arguably their best hockey. Like Demko, I saw a stat today. Demko is like 13-1-1 in his last 15 starts. That's insane, dude. It's crazy They had how one good stumble, he's like game three in Philadelphia, where Rick Tockett called him out and said that was a joke. Right. But it turns out, out yeah. it's, it turns out Philly's a good team. So, yeah, like I think at that point, the, the the expectation was Philly's not that good. You know, yeah, they outworked us, but we're better than them. And now you're like, actually, Philly's in a pretty good spot. Um, that Didn't, said, Carter Hart, we should issue this statement or I guess reiterate what has come out of Philly. Carter Hart is taking a personal leave of absence from the team. And there is no further detail on why he's doing this. Um, but... He's, he's left the team, so that clearly could have an effect on sure. what happens with the Flyers in the future. He's he's had a great season so far. Didn't MJ tell you guys about PDO? Yes, and with Vancouver in particular, is that what you're saying? Very high. What the hell's PDO? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you take shooting percentage, and you take save percentage, and you add them together. <laughs> and then if you're at 100, it's like basically you're fine. You're not overly lucky. You're not unlucky, but if you're above 100 and a lot above 100 basically you've been lucky mm -hmm. and you're due to regress but what is the actual what does pdo stand for i actually don't know that i should know that i don't know the acronym you can't pdo be blurting out PDO. yeah you have to know the name what is yeah. the what difference does it mean as long as i know I, what it means like, no cares? i know but like corsi was named after a guy i'll do some research I like pdo know. is not you know, I don't know, unless that's the initials of the guy who created the question. stat. Why is it called PDO? I guess we should get to the bottom of that at some point. Maybe MJ. I would know. never dare blurt out PDO numbers without knowing what PDO means. Yeah, but I know what Because I would be afraid means. of somebody like me saying, what does PDO mean? And I wouldn't know the answer. <laughs> I know what it means, how the stat is formed. That's all that matters to Right. Me. So what is it? Still Shooting know. percentage for the whole team. Yep, plus save percentage. So they have an amazing goaltender, so their save percentage is going to be really high. I don't know what their shooting percentage is, but inevitably those things tick back to par. Vancouver is a lot of pucks are going in. Like well, they do have a lot of guys percentage. who their shooting percentage is abnormally high. Now you would expect Pedersen to have that, Miller to have it. Sam Lafferty's a great example. My guy. Lafferty yeah. is not on pace for like hundreds of shots on net. <laughs> it just, you know, things are going in. He's having a great season. You're allowed to do that. Um, but, and then, you know, you look at a guy like John Tavares here. Tavares is actually throwing shots on net 
They're just yeah. not going in. His shooting percentage, I believe, is the like one point eight or something like that. Yeah. In the last, you know, month, month and a half. So you would assume some of that is going to start breaking his way. I will tell you, he is working at it. Like he was the second last player off the ice at practice today. Like he is doing everything he can to figure this out. Mm. Eventually it's gonna go. Who away. was the last guy off? Who do you think? Was it Ryan Reeves? It was Ryan Reeves. <laughs> Okay. Here's Mike Johnson. But, yeah, but go hang ahead. on a sec before you bring in Johnny. I, I, I like that, though, because if a guy's struggling, it's yeah. like, I'm going to sit out here and I'm going to try to fix something. Maybe I can find something I can bring to the table. Yep. I, I, it doesn't seem like a lot to somebody, but I like it. I will yep. say that that's not an irregular occurrence. He does that a lot, but like he's in a long drought. Mm hmm. Yeah. What you want? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I he, always love third line guys that don't score goals, and it's like you never see them working on their shot. It's like, <laughs> where are you? And like at lunch already? And William Nylander's out there for an hour after practice. I remember the guy who was. We should get to Mike, but Kessel first guy off. Like the minute the whistle blew, he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's you don't listen. You're not the Iron Man if you're practicing all the time, right? You practice too much, you get hurt. I love that mentality for Phil. Like immediately the whistle yeah. blows. He's like a dog at a park. Like he cannot wait to run. All right. Here's Mike Johnson, our TSN hockey analyst joining us here on the Maple Toyota hotline. Is that the least surprising thing you've ever heard that <laughs> Phil couldn't wait to get off the ice? And yet it just adds to the lore of Phil Kessel mm -hmm. that he could be like that and still get off the and still be that good. And, and you know, all the, Every good player is always, oh, last one off, oh, last one off, first one on. Finally, someone's like, yeah, no, he's last one on. He's first one off. That's right. That's, and he's still that good. The tricky thing is, like, I noticed that other players would start to do the same thing. It's like, mm, you're not, you Phil. Can't you that. can't get away with that. Yeah, you but can't that's, do that's that. That's leadership, that. man. That's yeah. leadership. It's like, who, do, who can I get to come along with me to get off this ice and hate this as much as I do? That is some leadership. <laughs> Yeah, you need you need a shield, Wait. man. You need some you need someone else to come down with you if you're going so, down. So, Mike, you know what PDO is? Do you know what it stands for? These guys are asking me what it stands for. I don't know what it stands for. Do you? I, no, it doesn't stand for anything. Oh, okay. That's what there it stands for. Yeah, amazingly enough, it doesn't stand for. It's just a random three initials. Doesn't have some sort of puck distribution organized like nothing. It's okay. just uh, it's just whatever. A, a dumb acronym for two numbers adding together so no yeah. other than vancouver's is the highest of any team ever after 45 games like this is recorded this thing so that, that's all you need to know about it that vancouver's third and fourth liners are scoring on like 14 percent of their shots so yeah yeah it's good for vancouver i really hope they don't get like swept in the first round because it's just going to be pdo overload like everyone's <laughs> going to be like i knew it i knew it after 45 I yeah I, I called it regression yeah Here regression to the mean the one thing, though, like PDO could be high or whatever. Shooting percentage could be high if you're a great shooter. Mm -hmm. And shooting percentage should be high mm -hmm. if you have a great – or save percentage should be high if you're a great goalie. And now uh, I don't believe their shooters are quite as good as the shooting. I do believe the goaltender may be as good as the save percentage. So that part of it shouldn't fall off. Well, I mean, this guy every single night, he did it again last night. He's Five. Five yeah. shutouts. Yeah. Like Demko, it's amazing because I, I think Hellebuck, I know on FanDuel, I believe last time I checked anyway, Hellebuck is the odds on favorite to win the Vesna. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he deserves it more than Demko. Like is Demko's, I believe statistics are, are better than his, like in terms no. of save percentage. They're what not, about the underlying no. goal? Oh, the underlying uh -huh. goal to expected goals saved yeah. above all that kind of stuff. Okay. You know what's funny? I looked at that yesterday. One, uh, uh, oh, wow. interesting. Gold. Hellebuck's goal against is, is better. Eight percent is about the same. Goal save above expected per start. Mm -hmm. they're, they're back to back. They're like nine and ten in the league for guys who played a few games. Okay. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they are one and two. I think regardless, um, I don't know how you want to stack them. You can make a case for either one, but they're one and two. I think right now for the Vezina. Yeah. Oh, I think it has to be the two of them. I mean, I. It has to be Hellebuck and and then, and and then who's three Hayes? Who's three? Well, that's a great you question. Could say Connor Ingram could maybe be free. He did it again last night, Johnny. Uh, yes. Hey, and we'll get to the own goal. Has anyone ever seen anything like that before? But oh. um, Connor oh, Ingram, boy. or maybe Jeremy Swayman by the end of the year. Don't sleep on the Swayman. Yeah, Sway, you're right. And all Does Boston ever move away from those guys, Hazy and Johnny? Like, do they ever say, let's trade one to try to get something different? Or do they just keep rolling with those two for how long? I mean, Swayman's the guy for the future, right? Like, that's the guy they're going to build around. He's the one who's going to stay there forever. 
Olmark, I think, has one more year after this one on his contract. Maybe I think it was two. four years, yeah. So yeah, two. So, so maybe two more. So um, maybe next year. But it working so well. They're not really cash strapped out right now. So, um, but they will probably, I guess, either next year, oh, probably, or certainly when Olmark expires, then Swayman will be the guy going forward. Well, you mentioned that own goal last night. Something oh, that boy. you your heart stops whenever teams like pull their goalie on a delayed call and then they regroup. Like, you mm-hmm. see it a, a lot, where teams will regroup. And last night, you can see it here on TSN4, Latang comes back, and he, he puts some mustard on the pass. Dude, who cares, man? I, I he know He even that. said it after the game, and he tried very politely to put it on yeah. Gino. He's like, if you can watch the play, it wasn't going in the net. And then it ended up in the net. So what the hell is it my responsibility? It was Gino's Come fault. On. It was Gino's fault, no question. He's one-handed. It's kind of lazy. It's careless. Mm-hmm. It ends up mm-hmm. in the net. Gino immediately points at him like he's an idiot. You can tell they're both like it's like an Abbott and Costello bit. They're like, I don't want to, I don't want to have to own this. But I do think it's on Gino. What I'm saying is, why pass it that like with that much mustard when it? Who cares if Arizona touches it? You just go on the power play. Like you don't need to make the no, play as no. It's the National Hockey League. Okay. Get some zip yeah. on it. All like, right. You, All right. It's, it's, it's not like he jammed Gino up. It, no. Is it going in the corner to a Hall of Famer? Maybe just stop. And get, grab it on your backhand and make a pass. Absolutely not. I see. I thought. Oh, you read Latang as like politely trying to defer. I, I, I think that was a little more salt on that de- uh, deferral. Like, uh, if you looked at it, it was going in the corner. I guess I shouldn't pass it into the corner when the net's out. I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> that's right. Um, maybe not. But that doesn't that sum up how Pittsburgh's going right now. Like the oh. Pittsburgh broadcast, the Pittsburgh fan base was up in arms. Like. The worst moment, the worst game ever for the Pittsburgh Penguins after getting dusted in in Arizona. So um, yeah, around the league, it's not just Toronto gets stressed out apparently when you when you don't do well. No, it's weird. Like again, I was looking at Pittsburgh today. Like statistically, their goalies are not awful. Like it has not been terrible. It's not like you know they're they've, they've both got an eight eighty save percentage or something like that. Um, they've had some injury problems. Their depth is clearly very exposed. And, you know, Carlson is playing fine, but he's not a 100-point guy anymore. So, like, that was supposed to be the big boost. On top of, I think Riley Smith's really found a groove. Achari has not been good. He's been hurt. He's been hurt, but when he's in the lineup, like, he looks old and slow. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't – it feels like, you know, they missed it last year. It feels very difficult to see Pittsburgh making the playoffs this year. Yeah, I mean, that was their whole problem last year. They had no depth. Like, they missed it last year when their star players all had really good seasons. And it looks like they're going to be on the bubble when their star players are, generally speaking, having really good seasons. But maybe predictably, and maybe I'm the only one who said this, but like, we remember the Carlson-Brent Burns experiment in San Jose. Two probably Hall of Fame defensemen. And you put them together, and you got less than their best from each one of them. Neither one was terrible, but neither one was great. And I think you put Latang and Carlson together, and that while Carlson has actually been really quite good, Latang has taken a real drop. I think it's just hard when you have another guy who does a lot of the same things you do, mm-hmm. chewing into what you do and opportunities for you to do it. And so I think Latang, who's been a you know a good teammate and taken second power play unit and defensive responsibilities, he hasn't been good in that role. And they need their stars to be good because the guys who are not stars generally haven't been. So um, yeah, it's 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 tenuous there for sure. Johnny, Ryan Reeves, how do you think this situation plays out in Toronto here? It seems like it's kind of coming to a head where he's like starting to vocalize it, where he's like, I'm healthy and then it's still on IR. How do you think it, how, well, how does this end up? Okay, a couple of initial thoughts. I think that initial, like, I think he was just trying to be candid and honest, and I appreciate that. But I, that, that whole article probably went over like a ton of bricks in the management office. Like, we don't need you saying that you're on LT or LTIR when you're 100% healthy. Like, that's not helping anybody, yeah. right? Because you want to be able to stay there as long as we need you there, not you, you know, politicking to be activated. Two, I wonder, like, him saying he's healthy is not the same as him being healthy. Like, in the same article, he's like, I'm healthy. Sometimes when I get out of bed, my kneecap pops out. Well, that doesn't really feel <laughs> like healthy, right? Like, you can't have it both ways. Um, this feels, oh, to me, like, I, I can't, I cannot see any way, shape, or form that he gets traded somewhere someone would take on that contract with that term for, for, for any reason. So it feels like you stay on LTIR until we... Well, he's off, Mike. 
He's off? He's yeah, activated. This afternoon, they, oh. they activated him. But oh. but that's because Bertuzzi is not on the roster right now because he's expecting a kid. So when he comes back... But is he healthy now all of a sudden? Like, this, yeah, like my, my dude, like it, it was two weeks ago where after his first practice, it was like the first week of January, he said he feels like he's ready to go. Right. Feel normal. They yeah, clearly so I, just decided... I, I the like the next roster yeah. crunch... The next roster crunch is waivers. Is yeah. what I, I guess that's what it comes down to because mm-hmm. now when Robita Island is off the book, so next... Next roster crunch comes waivers. And and in some ways, like you may be forcing their hand to doing that by being so public. Oh, I'm healthy. Put me in, put me in. Well, next time there's 24 guys healthy, you may find yourself at the Marley. Yeah. My spotty sense would think maybe the league made a call and said, this is interesting. He said he's healthy mm-hmm. and he's on IR. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden he's been activated. And again, I don't expect he'll play tomorrow night, but we did get word from Sheldon Keefe that Ilya Samsonov will get the start. This feels like a massive, like, fork in the road game for his career, doesn't it? Like, am I overstating that? That this is just a incredibly pivotal start for him tomorrow night? Um, I look at it as if it goes well, it could be. If it goes poorly, then it's you know it's, it's all part of work in progress. Like you know, if he gives up four on twenty eight, like you know, he's working his way back. He wasn't terrible, but he wasn't great. But if he's good or better than good, now maybe the belief in himself the organization's belief in him, it all starts to grow. And maybe now it's like, oh, Samsonov's going to be the guy. Now it's Wall and Samsonov, as it was always supposed to be. Hayes, you and I talked about this just yesterday. Like, I think that's what the Leafs would like to have happen. The opportunity to really reestablish himself. If he plays well against Winnipeg, a team as good as they are, even though they're banged up a little bit right now, um, it, it could really go a long way to, to sort of reestablishing his confidence and his spot in the pecking order. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that they're giving them the start also tells you what they think of what Samsonov might be able to do, but also the reality of where Martin Jones has been the last couple of weeks where, you know, he gave you the great run. Now he's kind of falling back to earth, which was so predictable. And he's still been excellent for them on a the big picture. But, you know, if he was rolling along like he had been, he would get some more start, but he's not. Mm-hmm. Somebody else has to take it. Samsonov gets the opportunity. Mike, obviously it's been a dry spell for John Tavares. If, if you were on that coaching staff or you were a teammate, or actually, if you're a coach specifically, what would you do to try to change this, spark this? Like, this is not, I know, like, it's easy to look at eight games without a point. This is like 30 games almost of not scoring mm-hmm. at five on five. So, I mean, as a coach, so what do you do? You try to put him in spots where he can be successful. Um, you know, you, you try to, I don't know if John Tavares is at the point of his career, like, you know, does he need the good guy pump up, you know, the highlight reel video oh, or like here, like come in, I got some clips for you. And it's all stuff he's done really well, all stuff that he can still do the way he scores and around the net, the hand play tips, rebounds, all that kind of stuff. Like maybe you offer up some of that. Maybe you get into William Nylander's ear and say, Willie, we need you to go because you need to help John go. Yeah. And like, that's part of the burden you carry on this team now, right? Like you can't just be like, I get points for myself and I get them on the power, but you got to make everybody go on your line including Tavares. So, like, you got to get back skating and playing and, 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 you know, getting him the puck in spots where he can be successful. You know, and then you just you cross your, you cross your fingers and hope that, you know, 12 years of, of, of good puck play hasn't gone away from him in the span of six weeks. Yeah, I mean, that it does feel like we were saying this earlier, Johnny, that they were banking on – and it's not like John's 40 years old. Like, he's still – he's 32 or 33 years 33. old. But he's had a lot of miles. Like he's, he came into the league when he was 18. But he's hit a wall. TJ Brody's hit a wall. Obviously, Ryan Reeves, John Klingberg Gio. didn't work. Mark Giordano, who probably won't play tomorrow night. Like the the older players on the team, it's like they've all collectively hit a wall at the same time, and that that is very troubling and mm-hmm. and possibly damaging. To, to whatever season you had planned. But there were hints, to be fair, there were hints of this like the last couple of years mm-hmm. that maybe you need to plan for some of this stuff happening. Right, but then on top like, of it, you, you compound it with Ilya Samsonov, who's 24 yes. or 25, playing as if he's 40 and well, can't do it anymore. And then you add Tyler Bertuzzi as one goal in, I think, 27, yeah. 26 games, whatever it is. Like a lot of things have not broken their way. Um, some of which, you're right, Jonas, should have been anticipated. Like yeah, like Brody had some doing. issues in the playoffs last year. Mark yep. Giordano couldn't play in the play. Like, yeah. But but it's really, it's it's exposed this year. And as a result, mm-hmm. you know, it, it puts a lot more pressure on the guys in their 20s who are rocking right now. Yeah, yeah, that was always going to be the case, but it wasn't supposed to be this much. And, uh, and, and I think, um, you know, as far as the defense goes, thank goodness Morgan Riley is skating like he's 24. 
and, and that he's been able to log the minutes and pick up the points. Like I know he's been on a lot of goals against the last few games, probably because he's getting overused. But uh, just with a thought to TJ Brody, I, I do know if you remember, he had a, he had a tough summer off the ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, passing in his family doesn't train properly. You know, like yeah. at his age, like I'm all, like you're like I, I get it. Like it's a result. Like you got to play, and he's getting older, and maybe a step slower. But also, when you don't get a normal summer at his age to train, to prepare, to get your body right. Like, I don't know how much of maybe just playing catch up all year long where he sort of felt, you know, a fractionally step slow given, you know, how good he's been throughout his career. And, and so I, I guess the reality is you got to do it on the ice, but I'm also like, you can't forget he had a really tough personal, nothing to do with hockey summer that maybe be impacting him the whole year because he wasn't able to repair la- properly last summer. Johnny, how would you handle this upcoming deadline with this squad right now? The way they're playing, what they've got, what would be your... Let's say you had two transactions. What would you have in mind? Well, I mean, I got to spend the Klingberg money, right? Like, I have to. I have to go chase, ideally, someone with a little term, but somebody. I'm getting, a, I'm getting some version of a right, shot, right side defenseman. Um, you know, I don't want to give up first round picks for them, but like, I don't know if you're going to have to give up first round picks for many players that will get traded. You know, I would be dealing seconds. I might I'd be steering clear of top prospects, but, you know. The next, next tier of not first-rounders, not your very best players, not Cowan or Minton, but somebody else. Um, you know, I would make a trade for a top four or the best defense that I can get for that price. And then I would, I would look for another whatever, the next best forward, forward or winger that could play for that same kind of price. And I would make those two trades, but I would not sell the farm this year. I just don't know if they're good enough. I wouldn't touch the goalies. I wouldn't shop for that. I, they just, they'd have to show me something the next two months, though, to change my mind because they're not yet – showing that they are competitive enough to warrant that aggressiveness at the deadline. Yeah, that that seems appropriate. And and you hope you get in if you're the Leafs. And then mm-hmm. at this Catch point, fire, yeah, that's kind of, it, it is a different approach where like last year it was like, all right, they're, they're, they made the moves. They're good. They're a juggernaut. Beat Tampa, get rolling. This year it kind of feels like, eh, I hope someone gets hot and Joseph Wall stands but, on his head. And So I get that. I just don't, isn't it? The front office are isn't it some of their mistakes that are compounding the issues with the play on the ice? Like to just put it on the players and be like, "Well, you guys haven't performed." It's like, well, the roster isn't as good. Mm. Isn't it on management to actually improve the team and actually fix some of the things that they? But do you dub, do you double Ow. down on mistakes Ow. now? Like Ow. that's the well, question. I think Mike's point. Like if you add those two things, they're a better like they're a better team. Yep. Like can they win the cup? Sure. I don't like to just I mean, say. And, like, they have no second-round picks, Mike. They don't have a ton of amazing prospects. Mm-hmm. If you're not trading mm-hmm. that stuff, I don't know what you're trading. Like, maybe you're trading a third-round pick? Futures, yeah. Like, deep in the future, yeah. Like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think I'm acknowledging that the roster's flawed, and that's why you're not going to be uber-aggressive in trying, to, in trying to, 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 to go for it this year. It doesn't feel like it's the year. Not because I'm saying that it's the player's fault specifically, like the roster hasn't been that good. A lot of the players that were brought in to make, you know, major impact haven't made those impacts. So I'm not suggesting otherwise. I'm just suggesting that's the reality. Yeah. Whoever's fault it is, that's the reality. So, yeah. you know, is, is it appropriate when you have this, like this whole year and you got like in the standings, what are they right now? 13th, 14th, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Regulation wins. They're like 25th. You look at all their underlying numbers. They are like dead smack in the fat middle of the league. Yeah. Like 19 to 14 and like almost all the categories that say, you know, this is how good your team is. So if you have the 16th best team in the league, is that the year? Like I get it. Time is of the essence. You have these four players that now is their prime, whatever. I don't know. Like I think maybe but that's time the is- thing. That's the thing. Like when are you waiting for? Like Tavares is 33. Next Bro- year when you have Brody is money, gone. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but like let Brody leave for whatever reason, let Bertuzzi leave, let Domi leave, let Samson off leave, let this money get out the books yeah. and take another crack when you have more flexibility, you have no flexibility. So you're going to overpay to try to fix a roster that's heavily flawed. And even if you were able to find good transactions and you are able to overpay for them, how good are they going to be? You're going to have the same problem. You're going to be in the division with two of the top seven teams in the league in Boston and Florida, a team, both teams that would be heavily favored, no matter what you do to beat you in the playoffs. So you're going to play one of the two of them in the first round. This is your problem. And that's why you have to be, you know, sometimes you have to be you know, discretion and, and say as much as you hate it, maybe this year is not the year. Well, and I think especially when it's more pronounced, when you, you say what you say about Tavares, like if Tavares was on pace for 45 goals, that would still be true. 
He's not. We just had that a conversation. So I don't think you owe anything to John Tavares. You've given him five years. He's getting paid a fortune. They've been very supportive of him. He's played in the top six every single second. It's been more that you, you can't mean by win. owe him. Owe him what? Well, that's my point. Well, Jonas just said you've got him here, so you got to go in because you have Tavares. Where I don't think he's pulling his weight. It's more that the, playing. your roster, like this, isn't going to last forever. Like these right. guys, like Matthews and Marner, get better are better next year. Exactly. Right? That's the point. So you're going to yeah. kick it to next year. It's like, well, how do you know you're going to be better? Like you're going to have more cap space. You're also going to have four basically $11 million players. Like, it's mm. not going to be easy. No, it's not going to be easy. And, You're and going to make better decisions next summer yes. than you made this summer. Absolutely. For whatever reason, that is really what it comes down to. They'll no be question. Un unpack, like, Ryan Reeves, you know, he'll be off the roster and it'll be a $200,000 cap hit when he goes away. But if he, if he goes away. But, like, you know, you'll have another crack at it. You'll have the Klingberg money, the Bertuzzi money, the Domi money, the Kamsoff money. The one thing they at least did well last year is give up no term. So they will have flexibility going forward. They'll have another crack at it. All the same kind of conversations will happen again to try to find the same kind of players for the same kind of money mm -hmm. and just hope that they are better fits and, and perform better next year as opposed to what they've done this year. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I mean, again, this, this year's not over. It no. could be a different approach in two or three months. You know, who knows? Maybe they make a coaching change and something happens there. Maybe they make a couple acquisitions at the deadline. Maybe Tavares snaps out of it and all of a sudden it's like, all right, he's back and he's producing and everything's all good. It's I'm not suggesting you're punting on the season. Like they're not they're not trading Tyler Bertuzzi for picks no. at the deadline or something like that. But last year was an all in. That was an all in. That was like trade well, I mean, after it's trade. Been that. Yeah. Like and five years in a row it's been all in, right? Yeah, more or less. So yeah. This year I think is a different it, it's an adjustment. Then you make a decision on how you're going to get through next year. And really, I, I think the big picture is what are they going to be two years from now when Tavares is off the books, when Marner's new deal kicks in, if he gets one here, you know, is it is it a scenario where two years from now they're building around Matthews, Nylander, and Riley. Own, and Riley. And Camp. And David Camp will be here. <laughs> you're right. But outside of that, there's a lot of flexibility at that sure. point. And you know, that that may very well be the case, which means you're going to have a good team, maybe not a great team, hopefully not an awful team at any point. Yeah. And, you know, you're still going to have Matthews at 28, Willie at 28, 20. Like you, you assume there's still Matthews, the top five player in the world throughout his contract. And Willie's still got another four or five years at least where he can put up big numbers and be an impact guy. And you build around it. The hard part, Hayes is that this year was supposed to not be like this. Yes. And this is sort of the, the, the adjustment we're all kind of making. Absolutely. At least front office. Like, this year was going to be like one of the years, like this is it. Like we are primed, ready. We know our window maybe not, could not, would not be any more open than it was two years ago, last year, this year. This is probably the tail end of that window knowing contra contractually, age-wise, everything else. But all these guys that are expiring, this was not supposed to be like this. So that, in that sense, it's a bit of an adjustment. Yep, for sure. All right, Johnny. We'll leave it there, buddy. Right, we'll do it later I in the week. I see our former colleague Dave Poulin walking in. I have to go heckle him for the Ottawa <laughs> Center's performance. Yes, please say hi for us. It's Dave well, now. It's not Pooley anymore. It's yeah. David. Okay, sorry, Dave. David. Oh, Mr. Mr. Poulin. Yes, yeah. Mr. Poulin, please All show right. the respect necessary. Thank you, Johnny. All right, boys. Mike Johnson joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Check out Maple Toyota's huge truck and SUV lineup, including Tundra, Forerunner, Highlander, and Grand Highlander in stock and ready to deliver. Visit mapletoyota.com. Yeah, listen, you can't force what isn't there as of now. Like, the Leafs are what they are through I think you make some 45 good points. games. I just don't like the implication. It's like, well, it's not going to happen this year, so we may as well not even try. It's like, well, why? Well, of course you're going to try, Jonas, but it's like you have to make an honest assessment. Like, do you want to – I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think Carolina would go all in? I mean, like, do you think Carolina thinks that – Everything's Russian. perfect for them, and they're great, and they no. can win a Stanley Cup. I'm no, but if I was Carolina, I would take a serious look at what the best goaltender was available yes. and the best other player was available and at least give it a shot. Okay, well, then that would suggest that you, that you think if you rectify that issue, they can win a Stanley Cup. So maybe they are different. But Carolina's a team that has been consistently good for years, like the Leafs. Locked yeah. to make the playoffs, really good team, and they've had a really inconsistent year. Um, you know, I yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we talked about it once way back on the show. The Daryl Morey 5% theory. Do you remember this theory? No. 
basically Daryl Morey. <laughs> you like that? You're gonna like this. Uh, I, 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 I can't wait. I can't wait for that. If you have a five percent chance to win the championship, you should be doing everything you possibly can to to win it. Sure. And that means like next year is not a. You're not worried about next year. Yeah. I guess and that's no. where I struggle well, with what this. What if you make an pick? honest assessment where you're like, our decor is not even close, and I'm not going to flip a bunch of prospects and picks to try to put band aids on this decor when I know it might get dummied in the first round? I yeah, but know. you also might win three. You might win four rounds, like with the top players that they have. If that clicks, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been waiting. But like, if it clicks, like there's hey, no reason. Stick your head up a bull's ass. <laughs> that's right. Tommy, Tommy Callahan. What, what have we said, seen? The forget Daryl Morey. We we quote Tommy Callahan. On That's right. What have we seen? Tommy Callahan is our guy. Yes. The successful teams have been bold, right? Mm hmm. Well, know. you just referenced though the elephant in the room that never comes up enough. Yeah. Well, that's what if the they big get thing. there and Mitch Marner continues to play the way he always does in then the playoffs? It's, then you're in the same position you've been. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what this is all like, about. They, they get they, there and Matthews. That was their score, decision. Like, they brought back the same players no, again I, and again and again. I know. That's their bet. They have the answers. Like the least front office will make the decision. We'll we'll see. Um all right, confirm and deny coming up. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Kirk Morrison coming up, former NFLer. ESPN analyst will join us in about a half an hour. Confirm and deny in about an hour. TSN 1050's Leafs lineup. Your chance to win Leaf tickets every week, all season long. Every weekday we announce a current or former Maple Leaf player. And on Fridays you have a chance to call in and name the Leaf lineup of the week. Giving away tickets to see the Leafs play the Stars February 7th. Plus we're throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. With each pair of tickets to make it the ultimate game night, Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day Dave Reed. Hmm. Dave Reed. Good TSN guy. Leaf alum. Star alum. Right? He won a cup there in 99. It's so Dallas. Actually, yeah, he was with Dallas. Right. And uh, so Dave Reed's your player of the day. And I saw, I think it was Jay last night, was doing the, the top 10 list of like the most heartbreaking losses. And like Buffalo is scattered all over that. And obviously the Leafs are in there a couple different times, like individual games. Yeah, like series, like they had, which was you know what I found interesting about the list is they had the the Kings like Gretzky game seven in ninety three as high, like higher on the list, more of a heartbreaking loss than up four one with eleven minutes to go in Boston. And I think that's I think that's right. That should be appropriate because that was in the third round. You were going to yeah. go to the Cup final to play Montreal. Yeah. And it's Gretzky, the Gardens. It was at home. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like <laughs> that four-one. It's like I told you the stats. It was ninety-nine point nine percent Leaf victory. Exactly. That's. I think that is more heartbreaking in the moment. Yes. The context of the the loss to the Kings is worse because it was an unbelievable ride. They beat Detroit in seven. They beat St. Louis in seven. They go to seven. But that game seven, Gretzky showed up right off the bat, and the Kings, I believe, controlled the game the whole game. And didn't L.A. end up winning like 5-2, I think it was? Or Yeah, the idea of being up 4-1 in the third period and losing that game yeah. is insanity. Right. Like, it just, it, it's, it's apples to oranges in terms of the way the game played out. Heartbreaking think, loss, both of them, clearly. But they were, like, the Leafs were up 4-1 with 11 minutes to go. <laughs> What's more iconic? It was 4 1 or wide right? Wide right? Yeah, Super Bowl. Wow, right? I, I think wide right. It should be. Scott Nor that's to win the Super Bowl. Okay. Like that. But that for is, you? Well, for me, obviously, nothing will top 4 1 with 11 minutes to go. Does it matter that the team wasn't really that no, good? No. Does doesn't it? matter at all. They were down 3 1 in the series. That's irrelevant. Like they were down 3 1 in the series and it went to overtime in game seven. Yeah. If you take a step back. Without watching any of it, you'd say, wow, that's actually pretty incredible. Yeah. They really battled. That's a team with a lot of character. <laughs> <laughs> they did have a lot of character. No, they did. Yeah. Like they, were, they played hard that year. They were a fun team. They were a really likable team. They were a tough team. Yeah. They, they, it, it was. It was a really fun year because it was the shortened year. It was the lockout. They made the playoffs for the first time in eight years or whatever it was at that point. More than that, actually. Close to 10, I guess. Um, yeah, because it was May of 2013, and they yeah, hadn't so been in the playoffs since 04. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, the top 10 list had Scott Norwood wide right at number one. 
Man. And it also had Brett Hall like goal in the crease in '99. What about Dave Reed benefited from greatly? By the way, I just need to know this gory detail. Was Norwood? <laughs> was that to win yes. the Super Bowl? Yeah, I believe the score was twenty to nineteen, and there was like three seconds on the clock. Oh, my yeah, God. he hits that. It's a walk off. He gets he gets the Rudy Rudiker. And he's and they're heroes, and that I was just the, think Hayes, if that was your team, uh, like if you, oh, dude, God. that that I'm pretty sure was the first of four, and after that they lost three straight Super Bowls after Norwood went wide right. That's tough. <laughs> like the, the amazing thing is they got back three more times. You're like, all right, Norwood. <laughs> like, did, how did he did, come back? I, I, that's a great question. I should know that. It's like you not knowing like PDO. Could... I don't know if Norwood was on the team the next year. Like, how do you live in Buffalo after that? Well, it's kind of like an apartment situation. Dude, I don't care how how much they like that kicker that missed the other day. I don't know if you can bring that guy back in the locker room. I don't know if he can. Yeah, I guess this is pretty cool. Like, Buffalo fans have been, like, pumping a lot of money into his charity, yeah. Tyler Bass. Like, I think it's raised, like, $50,000 or something in the last couple of days because people are like, man, this guy's getting crushed and... Um, but I, I agree like Tyler Bass has got a, he's got years left on his deal. You know, they, they obviously really like him there. Look that up, Doogie, like the, the future of Scott Norwood, you know, what's wild about Norwood and you can see it in like, it's grainy television. It's amazing how television has improved over 30 years. Except when they do the, the really high shots in this, in the stadium and you're like, why is the camera so bad? Right. But anyway. But- I guess so. I, I, it's still HD. You know when they not? show like there's 12 guys on the field and like they're showing the silence. Like anyway, it's a little bit crazy, but it's not 1991. It's graphics. a pruder, but yeah. Go but ahead. he's uh, Norwood just had the one bar, <laughs> yeah, like that old school kicker. Oh, yeah. the, the one, one bar. One Kickers bar. don't do that anymore. No, because I think someone went to them and said, "You literally don't look like an athlete. <laughs> like it looks like a joke that you have one bar. Can you just pretend to be a real football player and wear a real helmet?" But yeah, he had the one bar, pushed it wide right. Uh, speaking of ratings, you see down in the states, Chiefs Bills did fifty million on CBS. Wow, fifty million for a divisional game is crazy. And the ratings up here in Canada were like astronomical too. Like the NFL is wild. How many people watch it? Do you think they're praying for the Chiefs to get in? Yes, I, I think they. Oh I think they God. want Taylor they Swift beyond, there really yes. badly, right? Yeah, yeah, they want Mahomes and they want Swift. They want, <laughs> which one more? I'm not sure. Swift, but they want that combination in the Super Bowl. There is no question in my mind. I'm certain I'm not the only guy in North America that was made aware that Taylor Swift is resuming her Eras tour. I don't know. That weekend in Japan, she plays Tokyo like the Saturday of the Super Bowl. Oh, they're losing then. No. Because she's got her own, or she doesn't play on the Sunday, and they're like 13, 14 hours ahead. She'll get. You're telling me she's on a red eye private bird absolutely. to get back to the Super Bowl. I would be shocked if she wasn't. I think wow. she's in Australia the next weekend, which is wild for her to go like Tokyo, Vegas, Brisbane. But I'll bet you that's what ends up happening. If if the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl, I would I would have to believe Taylor Swift will be there. Regardless of her being in Tokyo the night before. Do you think there'll be an over under like on FanDuel for how many times she gets shown on the broadcast? Dude, she's not going on that flight, man. I, he I is. You don't, he's you don't think so? This. You don't think she, if, if the Chiefs There would the only Super be Bowl. one maneuver if she moved a nighttime concert up like to the middle of the day. She's or not something. doing that. She's not you can't put your own career on hold for, for Kelsey. I mean, that's not for anybody, for that matter. She's a giant. They've spent a fortune. She's making a fortune. They've been waiting for her to get over there. You can't ask people to adjust their <laughs> You know when they're going to show up at the concert because you want to get back to Vegas to see the Super Bowl. Come on, you but she's she is going there. to absolutely she'll be there. Yeah, she's got a private bird. She'll sleep. She's not she's not riding you know the middle seat of a WestJet flight. <laughs> like she's on a private bird to Vegas, sleeping all night, watches the game, and then flies right out afterwards. Hundred percent, she'll be there. Hundred percent. And if if they are in the Super Bowl and she's in attendance. There will be lines, I guarantee it, of how many times she's shown. What would you put the line at? Four and a half? Oh, I way don't understand over that. how that way stuff over. is fair, though, because there's cameramen, there's producers that are involved. Wouldn't the producer just say to his buddy, like, bet the under, I'm not putting her up that much? Mm-hmm. Same as the anthem. It's like I there's people that, that are 
There's people that are outside of the stadium on the grass timing the anthem from outside. People on the inside. How is there not monkey business going there on is. with that type Even of with stuff? the anthem singer, wouldn't you just be like... What about you the know, color of the Gatorade? Isn't the trainer yeah. saying, well, here comes orange. There is. <laughs> Hammer orange. There is, but I guess the calculation on it is there's, a, there, there's enough money coming in that will be losing that will compensate for the winners that you just understand you're giving out because they have inside information. Yeah. Okay. Like there's not, you can't stop someone from spreading the detail. Like, like if, if someone, you were doing the anthem, when you go to Jeff and be like, I'm going to do this really fast, bet the under. Yeah, I probably would. Right. Absolutely. Like, and it's pre, it's pre-recorded. That's not live. The anthem? Yeah, the anthem's recorded 100%. What? No, it isn't. No, it's yes, not. It's, it's, a it's, no, it's a live broadcast. No, it's not. You, what are you talking it's about? A this guy's a moron. It's a lip sync. You can't. Do you know how many people are watching this event around the world? Do you think they're going to bank on a malfunction of the mic or or someone loses their voice? Yeah. Oh, you're saying through? it's lip syncing. You're not. I yes. thought you meant like they're they're somehow doing it earlier and then playing it. I'm, I don't know. What. I'm saying that it's been recorded earlier in the evening uh, and they're going uh, out. I, that is my belief. I'm not, I don't have, I don't know that definitively. So I'd be you're shocked telling if it wasn't true. When Whitney Houston did that amazing rendition. That one might have been real, but I think it might have been a lip sync. <laughs> wow. I really do. Like if you're producing wow. an event like that, Jonas, you can't afford to have someone go out there. Or butcher the lyrics. Butcher the lyrics, a mic malfunction. And if you're the yeah. one singing it, wouldn't you prefer to, I would lip sync it every lip single day. Lip syncing would be hard, no? No, you can, not Dude, the anthem. If you're you know a the, real you deal performer, sleep, you're like, I'm not lip syncing this. That's, yeah, I'm with Come Jeff. on, that's amateur hour. Like the, the halftime show is not 100% live. Well, that's different. Like the the mic will go on when they're like, everyone clap your hands. Like, that's they'll give different. you that. I think Jeff is right. Why is it any different? Because that's like they're dancing. There's lots of components. There's lots right. of crap going on. Would we you need know, to get to the bottom of this. You I'll tell you why. You can look awfully stupid, man. If that thing's recorded, yes. and you're lip syncing, and something goes wrong, well, and you, you look get it that's wrong. True, you man. turn into Millie Vanilli in a hurry. <laughs> oh, <man. yeah. laughs> Remember uh, what was her name? Jessica Simpson's yes. sister. Remember she was Ashley on SNL. Simpson. Ashley Simpson, and she, she was lip syncing, and it stopped, <laughs> and she was just like. What am I doing? Oh, no. <laughs> Have you not seen that? That ended her career, effectively. Well, that... Like, she wasn't much of a talent good. anyway. But she was on SNL, and the recording stopped, and she looked like such... I, I fell for it, man. Now, it was, I will you think? hammer YouTube. I find that when I'm done. Uh, I'll send it to you on YouTube. It's one of the... She starts doing, like, a little dance that really is goofy. And she's embarrassed. Like, I, I don't blame her. It's a terrible situation to be in. Jeff's right. Why don't you we can't take, take a that break. Chance. Why don't we take a break and come back and hammer that? Let's see okay. it on this show. JP, try to find that, all right? <laughs> Ashley Simpson on SNL will play it. And uh, Scott Norwood returned for the next season. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I guess he was he was perfect in the playoffs. Yeah, he, he did return. Good for Scott Norwood. All right, bring the guy back then. Shout out to Norwood. He probably loves that Tyler Bass is kind of – Taken over for him, right? It's wide yeah, right 2.0. Welcome 2. to the 0. club. Welcome to the club. Man, I hope... I want the anthem to be live, but it's got to be pre-recorded. Jeff's right. Like, you can't take that chance. I think Look, it's more of a gamble to not pre-record it. Why? They're singers. That's They sing. Yeah, but it's the Super Bowl, man. There's so many people watching. If you have a bad day, you mess up a lyric, you can't hear anything in there, too. Do you know how loud it is? Like, you're waiting for your cue? All right. <laughs> We'll come back with Ashley Simpson butchering <laughs> her own song on Saturday Night Live. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, so 100% anthem at the Super Bowl. It's pre-recorded, and the reason it looks so good is because the anthem singer, the mic is off, but they're singing, so they're, like, animated, and they can hear it dubbed in. But we still don't have so like there's no proof. microphone. Yeah. They're just yelling at the top of their lungs. No, they, with no they have a microphone. This is the, anecdotal the evidence that you're citing. Well, I'm citing someone who's been in the industry for a long time. Sophie Cooley is, is as she said, he has Whitney the definition Houston. of a great reputation. And she said exactly what she, that, w yeah. that it's go ahead, Jonas. That she broke my heart when she said Whitney Houston actually lip synced that famous anthem. Yeah, that's the way it goes. It's the Super Bowl. All right, you can't have some guy go out there. Dude, don't talk to him push. like he's a dummy. As if we knew that. Like yeah. I thought it was live. Like show some stones and do it live. No, you can't. Well, and, from and a production oh, standpoint, you what can't. else we learned is that I guess Garth Brooks refused to go on stage one year. What was his problem? And so they I, decided we have to pre-record something. Garth Brooks. 
refuse to go out there. I mean, he sent me a tweet and said, Meatloaf passed out in Edmonton on the stage and the music kept playing. (laughs) That's that's (laughs) not good. My guy, Meat. Yeah, Meatloaf, man. I wonder if you ever regretted going with that name. Probably. Like five years into your career, we're like, why did I go with Meatloaf? (laughs) Why why is he called? My beef with Meatloaf. I, I ended up bidding on a Peyton Manning football helmet at an auction with and i it was jeff o'neill and then meatloaf o'neill meatloaf and then i came face to face with meat and i go how much you want i was just glued like wasted and i'm like how much you want to go on this helmet meat and he's like i don't and i'm like how much money could meatloaf possibly have like hundreds of millions i'm trying to play the role Mm -hmm. and this guy doesn't know me from a hole in the wall and i took the helmet off him i got my (laughs) I got the helmet. I took off of meat. Wow. I, I Did you him call down. him meat? Good, yeah. Good for you. Meatloaf. That's awesome. Yeah. Meatloaf. Why yeah, is so, he called meatloaf? I don't know. Oh. I, I really, I don't, I don't know. But, uh, and some people are wondering, like, how do you get Roseanne Barr singing the way she's singing? If that, like, that obviously wasn't <laughs> We don't a know song. if this is yeah. right. Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis was, that's a butcher. That's live. It has to, you can't record oh, yeah. that. Carl that out. Lewis was just. Oh, it's awful. Do we have the Ashley Simpson? Can, do we have enough time to play it here quickly? All right. Ashley Simpson on Saturday Night Live. This is the danger of possibly I'm pre-recording. I'm laughing and I haven't seen it. Go ahead. Ashley Simpson. <laughs> on a Monday. <laughs> She's not even singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, then she starts doing the embarrassed hop around the bunny em- hop. The embarrassed hop around and the music's playing, the guitars aren't so, even plugged in. Did she finish? No, I think it I, I don't remember, Jonas. I don't recall, but I like that was really that ugly. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I because, would run away. I would run off. Well, the stage. she walked off, and that was it. And then I can't imagine she came back. That might have been the second one. Like, did he just say once again, Ashley Simpson? Maybe she knocked out the first song. But um, no one remembers the first one. Really <laughs> embarrassing. Really, and that can happen at the Super Bowl. You can't have that if you're in the production truck. You can't have it. All right, coming up, final hour. Overdrive continues. Confirm or deny. TSN 1050, soon to be up on TSN two.